Hey guys, um, gonna be a video here calculating the surface area of a composite 3D shape. So these are some of the toughest problems you're gonna face in year nine geometry. Um, they involve a lot of understanding the problem and planning um, how you're gonna solve the problem before actually just solving it. And unfo un unfortunately for a lot of these problems, there's no just straight up formula you can use. So it's actually gonna take a bit of planning and preparation before you start solving. Uh, and I'm gonna take you through my thought process as I do this one. So as we can read here, uh, example two, calculate the surface area of this bucket. Um, so when we're thinking about a bucket, it's really important to think about what that is. Um, it is a hollow cylinder, okay? Uh, in my example here, I'm gonna highlight a couple of things. First of all, the rim or outer edge of my, the top edge of my bucket is one centimeter wide. And I've also got an eight centimeter radius for the outside of the bucket. That's gonna be important shortly. And I have a height here of 12 centimeters for my bucket. Um, this is all I'm given at the moment. And if I need any other dimensions, which I will, um, I'm gonna show you how I'd figure them out as well. Uh, so when I'm reading the question, so in an exam, you're gonna have these sorts of questions and it's imperative, which means really, really important, of the utmost importance, that you understand what the question is asking and not just rush ahead and say, calculate something else. In this question, it says, calculate the surface area of this bucket, which means every exposed surface of the entire bucket, I wanna be calculating the area of that, which means, I'm going to be calculating the base of the bucket, okay? Inside and outside, the bases, the two different bases of the bucket. So the bottom base that's actually touching my desk. And also if I put my hand in the bucket, that base that I feel at the bottom, that's two different areas that I need to calculate. I also need to calculate the outside of my bucket. And I also need to calculate the inside area of my bucket. So if I filled up my bucket with water, the edge that the water is touching, I need to calculate that surface area. And lastly, my bucket, or this rudimentary version of a bucket, has a thin lip around the top of my bucket, and I need to calculate the area of that as well. So it's gonna be quite a process, and this video might actually uh, be quite long by the end of it, so um, apologies for that, but it's just the way it is, I suppose. Um, so this is a pretty challenging question. So this is gonna be a complex familiar type question in your exam. Uh, so if you can nail this, if you can learn the processes and the strategies you need to solve these, you'll be in really good shape. So to start with, I'm just going to list all of the areas that I need to calculate, just like I did in words there. I'm gonna write it down on my page. I'm gonna say number one is gonna be bottom of bucket. And I'm going to call that a circle. I'm gonna draw a circle after it because it is a circle, the bottom of my bucket. Um, for number two, I'm gonna go and say the outside of bucket. And this is kind of trickier because it's the outside of a cylinder. And if I think about it here, I don't have a cylinder around, but if you imagine a can, a can of soup, right? If you had your can of soup and you actually peeled off that label, okay, the label goes all around the can. If you peeled that off, you'll notice that the, uh, the, the label of that is actually a rectangle. So the outside surface area of my bucket here is actually gonna end up being a rectangle. I don't have to label it straight away. All I wanna do is just draw it so it sparks in my mind the area formula that I need to recall um, to solve this problem. Um, the third thing I'm going to say for the area, I wanna calculate that outer lip. Um, so I'm gonna just say uh, top lip and that's gonna be really tricky because that's not a shape we know. It's actually called an annulus. It's kind of like a donut shape. Um, when we get to it, I'll show you what I mean, but for my drawing, I'm just going to draw this. I'm gonna draw my annulus and I'm gonna shade in what I want to calculate the area of. So it's gonna be that lip around the top of the bucket if I'm looking straight down on top of it. Um, two more things. Number four is going to be the inside of bucket. And just like the outside of the bucket in number two, that is going to be a rectangle as well. It's counterintuitive because it doesn't seem like it because it's curved, but if we put an inside wrapper in there and then pulled it out and unraveled it, it's gonna be a rectangle. And lastly, number five is going to be the inside bottom of buckets. And this is going to be a circle also. Um, 
Okay, cool. I'm actually going to change one thing uh, and I'll explain why once I get to why I'm changing the order of this, but I'm gonna change number three and number five around and move that one up there. Change that to a three, change this to a five. I'll explain why uh, shortly, but it's just gonna make my life much easier. And you, you'll understand this once we get to it. Okay, so bottom of the bucket, then I'm gonna calculate the outside of the bucket, then the inside bottom of the bucket, then the inside edge, that curved edge of the bucket, and then lastly, that top lip. And that's gonna be my solving. Um, so you'll notice so far, I've actually applied that poly a problem solving process we really encourage you to do. Uh, first, I understood the problem. I highlighted key information, and especially in the question, I've highlighted calculate the surface area of this bucket. So I know what I'm calculating, not volume, but area. Then I've devised a plan. I've listed in an order of steps what I'm gonna be solving, and I have to start um, solving those things. So first of all, I want the area of the bottom of the bucket. Now this is a circle, so straight away, I'm gonna write area of part one, okay? Um, I've, I've labeled them one, two, three, four, five. So I wanna be referencing those uh, numbers when I'm calculating the area. So the area of part one, is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared. That's the area of a circle formula, and I'm gonna need that to solve my area of this circle. So now I'm going to say, well, that's gonna be equal to pi times. Now my radius of the base is that full um, radius that we've got listed up here that's eight centimeters. So it's gonna be times eight squared. Now eight squared is 64, so I'm gonna type into my calculator here. I'm gonna write 64 times pi, whoops, go back to, uh, 64 times pi, and I get 201.06 centimeters squared. Okay, that's the area of the base of the bucket, cool. Um, now the outside of the bucket, if we imagine that this had a label, okay, for some reason had a label, maybe a big paint can, um, the paint can is 12 centimeters high. So if I'm calculating the area of number two, and I know it's gonna be a rectangle, first, I'll write length times width. Um, but to figure out the length and the width, I'm just gonna draw a really quick diagram here to the right. And I know that this is going to be 12 centimeters. The height of that label, if I peel it off the bucket, is going to be 12 centimeters high. And the width, like the, the, the distance across the top of my rectangle, is actually gonna be the circumference of my circle. So that label that goes right around our bucket, its curved surface ends up being that top layer. So this is going to be two times pi times r. So two pi r is the formula for the circumference of a circle. And the radius of this circle is eight centimeters. So I can just say as well, this little r here, is going to be eight, okay? So, uh, in fact, I won't even do that. I'm gonna say uh, this is going to be equal to two times eight times pi. And if I put that in my calculator, it's gonna be 16 times pi, and I get 50.27 if I round. 50.27 centimeters, okay? 12 centimeters here. So my length is 12 centimeters. 12 times my width that ends up being 50.27. And that, when I put it into my calculator, times 12 is going to be 603.19, if I'm rounding again, 19 centimeters squared. So I have the area of the outside of my bucket as well. Now the inside base of my bucket, and this is where I'm gonna to have to actually figure out a new dimension, because if I'm thinking about the inside of my bucket, the inside of the bucket does not have a radius of eight centimeters. That's the outside of the bucket. Um, the lip is one centimeter wide, and therefore from the center of the circle to that inner lip, if I draw another line on my diagram, if I go from the center circle just to that inner lip, that's gonna be eight minus one or seven centimeters long. Okay, so for area three, the inner circle, it's, it's a circle, so it's still pi times r squared. 
but my radius this time is seven. So it's gonna be pi times seven squared. Now a bit of a mental arithmetic, seven squared is 49. So we're gonna do 49 times pi and get 153.94 centimeters squared, if I'm rounding. And that's the base of my bucket. Number four is the inside wall of my bucket. So again, just like number two, I'm gonna go A4, or the area of part four, is gonna be length times width. It's gonna be another rectangle that we unravel. Now the height of this inner, inner surface is still 12 centimeters. Um, it's still 12 centimeters, so it's going to be 12 times whatever the width is. And I need to figure out what that width is. I'm gonna draw another rectangle for myself. And I know again, the height is 12 centimeters and the width is gonna be two times pi times r. Again, because that's the circumference of the circle. If I take this rectangle, uh, let me grab a sheet of paper here. If I take this rectangle and curve it into a cylinder, you'll notice that this edge here is the circumference of a circle. And when I unravel it, it also happens to be the top edge of my rectangle. So that's what we're doing here. In this case, the radius changes to seven. So it's two times seven times pi, which is gonna be 14 times pi, which is going to be 14 times pi, 43.98. So pretty close to that first one, but slightly different. 43.98, which is our width, 43.98. And that times 12 is 527.79 centimeters squared. And we're nearly there. The last thing we need to do is the top lip. And so that top lip, if we think about it, we had a big circle and a smaller circle inside. Now the smaller circle is hollow. So the only surface area we have there is the difference between the big circle and the little circle, okay? That difference that I've shaded, if I zoom right in here, that shaded section is what we're trying to calculate. And if we take the big area of the circle and take away the small area, that's what we'll be left with. So when I zoom back out here, and this is why I left it to last because now I've already actually calculated the big circle. That was um, the outside of the bucket, the bottom of the bucket. So that was part one. And part three was the inside bottom of the bucket. So I've calculated those two areas and now all I have to do is a simple subtraction to get that lip area. So the area of number five now is going to be equal to the area of part one the bottom of the bucket, because if you think about it, the bottom of the bucket, if it's not curved at all, if it's a straight up and down bucket like my drawing, the base of the bucket is exact same as the top of the bucket if it had a lid. So area of one minus the area of the inside bottom of the bucket, which is the small circle, this is gonna be the area of three. So even though that's not an official formula, I still write a formula. It's really important that I do that. Now I substitute in, area of one was 201.06, and I'm gonna subtract from that the area of three, which was 153.94. And if I do that subtraction on my calculator, 201.06 minus 153.94, I get 47.12 centimeters squared. And that's that top lip area. Okay, finally, the last thing I need to do is because I'm calculating the total surface area of my bucket, I need to add all of these areas together. And this is the nice easy bit. So I say now TSA for total surface area, that's gonna equal the area of one plus the area of two plus the area of three. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Plus the area of four plus the area of five. And that's going to equal, and I'm gonna substitute in all these values. Yes, it is a little bit time consuming, but um, that's sometimes what we have to do in mathematics. Sometimes it is a little bit time consuming. 201.06 plus 603.19 plus 153.94 plus 527.79 plus 47.12. Okay, and that's gonna equal, get out my trusty calculator here. Um, I'm gonna put all of those values in, 201.06 plus 603.19 one nine uh, point one nine plus one five three point nine four plus five two seven point seven nine 
plus 47.12, we get, if I haven't made a mistake, which I may have, but who knows, 1533.1 centimeters squared. So interestingly, despite all of those values having two decimal places, we end up with just one decimal place, which is pretty cool. Um, 1,533.1 centimeters squared in total surface area for this object. So just quickly to reiterate, if you've made it this far in the video, our process for solving this problem was, first of all, we identify key information. We highlight, we circle, we underline, we just understand the problem. And then that, that includes reading the question, highlighting, circling, underlining what it's asking. In my case, it was asking to calculate surface area. So I must do that. Then I devised a plan. I said, okay, first I'm gonna calculate the bottom of the bucket, then the outside, then the bottom of the inside of the bucket, then the inside walls of the bucket, and finally that top lip section. And then I followed through with my plan, setting it out accordingly, um, formula, substitute, solve, okay, every single time. Uh, and then once I've done that, all I realized I had to do was the total surface area of the bucket is just gonna be all of the individual surface area added together. I went ahead and did that still with a formula, then I substituted in, and then I finally solved, and I got my final answer. Um, yeah, I hope this helps uh, you achieve success with calculating the surface area of composite 3D objects because it's a quite a challenging um, process. Um, there's a lot of room for errors, but if you follow your poly problem solving process, I'm sure you're gonna find plenty of success. Uh, have a go at the questions down below at the bottom of the OneNote under this example, uh, and good luck.